So how does zero touch provisioning really do what it does? We know that it uses something like DHCP, but what is the real magic? What is the real secret sauce that goes on there? And what are the steps that would be involved for a Junos device to go through zero touch provisioning and get brought into the network with all of the correct settings, configurations, and even the images involved? So let's get going talking about how ZTP really works under the hood. I'll see you there. So how does ZTP actually work? To answer this question, you really have to ask, how does DHCP work? If you really think about it like this, when we plug a Juniper device into the network, Juniper devices by default are running as DHCP clients on two interfaces when it comes to switches. The first one is our management ethernet interface, ME0. Sometimes it's also EM0, depending on the platform. Uh, and then we're also running it on IRB.0. This is the default VLANs layer three interface. So on the back of the switch, actually, I'm going to kind of draw it like this. We've got, uh, this is kind of going into the back of the switch. And on the front of the switch, we've got our access ports. As long as these are plugged in in some way to where they can actually reach the DHCP server, one of these interfaces is going to get an IP address. And then from there, it can begin to perform the zero touch provisioning operations. Think about DHCP though. DHCP gives you an IP address out of the IP address pool. Then what does also DHCP provide? It provides options. And you know those classic options like the default gateway or DNS servers, or even things like NTP servers can be options. But then there's custom options that you can also throw into the mix that are often contained using TLVs, type length value fields. The TLVs are modular in the sense that they say, what is the type of data that we're about to transmit? What is the length of that data? And what is the data? That is what a TLV says. So I could say the type is going to be something for ZTP. The length means the following bits are going to be used for that particular purpose. And then the actual data itself. So using specific types and specific TLVs, we can define specific options that these Junos devices are listening for. When they receive their IP addresses via DHCP, they're listening for these options so that they know then what their next step should be. These TLVs can contain things like what is the desired image? And this is what it checks first. Once this device from the DHCP server receives an IP address, if it provides the specific option that is needed that specifies this is the image that you need, it could be something like, uh, make up something like Junos uh, 21.1 R7, I don't know, just making something up. If this device looks and says, well, I'm on Junos 20.2 R3, that means I'm not up to snuff. I need to go get a new image. The next TLV would specify the IP address of the TFTP server that actually has the image. So thanks to the fact that this device now has an IP address via DHCP, it can go over here to that TFTP server, download the image, and automatically run through the image upgrade process. Again, you have done nothing up till this point except for rack the device and plug it in. DHCP did the rest of the work for you. And next thing you know, you've just saved yourself hours of time that it usually takes to upgrade an operating system on the Junus devices. Once it's brought up to snuff on the latest operating system upgrade, it also can learn via TLVs if there is a desired configuration file specifically for this device, specifically for its IP address. And it can then learn what is the server that it needs to go to, let me kind of hide Knox for a second, and say, okay, well, it's time for me to download this config file and apply it to my running or active configuration data store. That way I can configure things like NTP, SNMP, DNS, SFlow, and all of the other network monitoring and maintenance things that these devices would need to know about. Then once that's done, you can take it a step further and use a centralized configuration management tool like Ansible to SSH into this device and finish performing the configurations by deploying something like EVPN VXLAN based on the YAML templates that Ansible is built off of. So it seems fairly magical, but at the end of the day, you realize this is using the exact same technology that phones and wireless APs have been using all of these years. 
When a phone plugs into the network, it receives an option via DHCP that tells it where the phone server is. When a wireless access point plugs into the network, it receives an option that tells it where the wireless LAN controller is. Do you see? Like, this isn't actually new technology. We're just going like, oh, well, we should have used it for that. And now we actually are. So using DHCP, the Junos devices are out of the box immediately searching for where is the desired operating system and where is a base configuration that I can get to bring myself online. So your job now, based on zero touch provisioning, is slot it into the rack and screw it in, plug in the management ethernet interface or plug in an access port or both, and then plug in the power and walk away. Because DHCP will take over from there and bring it to the latest upgraded operating system and bring its configuration up to speed and it'll probably do it quicker than you ever could have manually. And beyond that, you could plug in all of these devices at the exact same time and have all of these tasks going concurrently. That way you could actually provision many different devices all at the same time instead of one at a time. Think about the, the, the efficiency gain that you've just gained here by doing nothing more than installing new hardware. We're not talking about automating like the deployment of EVP and VXLAN yet, even though we kind of are when I mentioned it with Ansible. When I'm really talking about ZTP, I'm talking about how do I just get this factory defaulted device to be usable? ZTP makes that a possibility. And that's what's so fascinating. Now, in the next video, we're going to dig even deeper and look specifically at what those DHCP options and TLVs are that you need to configure in order for this to actually work. And again, this is not something that you're configuring on the Junus devices. This is what you're actually configuring on your DHCP server. So I'm just going to highlight the options for you and you can take it from there. But this has been how ZTP works. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.